Um, you see, like when we talk about jujitsu, we can uh, we've been talking for an hour about just techniques and little details, and that's all fine. But you know, there there's the values that are if you don't have them, you you really don't have anything, in my opinion. Right. And Kano Sensei wanted this education to be at the end put out into a better society and you and me we talk about these all the time but if we do not tackle uncomfortable uh, topics then in my opinion we are just cowards hiding behind the cool moves so what i want to talk to you about is the rufino dos santos incident because whenever i talk about Hello, Gracie's Kumikata. I did a video on it against Kato. There's a lot of Kumikata going on that the naked eye doesn't really see unless you know. Or when I talk about this fight or that technique, there's always people uh, mentioning Rufino dos Santos. And mm-hmm. I know you and your brother, uh, Guy, you did a, a response to back in the day when uh, Didos did that hit piece, I, co- I should call it. But <laughs> if you can uh, tell us again, what you said in that video with Guy, and also if later on, um, Elio Gracie himself talked to you about the incident, how he reflected as an older man, because when it happened, he was a very young boy. Yes, yes, that's, and I think we have to paint the picture in a clear way for people to understand. Elio Gracie was practically a homeless child. Homeless, he didn't have a home. Because his father left, um, he had another family in a different state in Sao Paulo. Um, his mother was going through a very difficult situation, not just financially, but also mentally and emotionally. So Elio Gracie, who was the youngest of the brothers, went to live in an institution for the blind in Brazil, the Benjamin Constant Institute. Then, he went to live in um, with the rowers in a club. In the, the they had the dormitories for the athletes in the Botafogo club, and he went to live there. So imagine a child without parents. His brothers were traveling around. Remember the age difference in Carlos and Elio is of eleven years. I saw a post that my friend uh, Robert Drysdale that he made recently saying, Elio Gracie, a newspaper article mentioned that Elio Gracie claimed that the first time he heard about jiu-jitsu was when he heard about the fight between Carlos and Omar in Sao Paulo. And this proves that the Gracies were not training jiu-jitsu in the 1920s. First, that match took place in the 1920s. But secondly, the fact that Elio Gracie didn't know doesn't prove anything because Elio Gracie was not living with his brothers. Elio Gracie was on his own. He was a teenager who had some health issues and uh, and emotional issues. Can you imagine being practically homeless as a child, right? So he, his circumstances were very difficult as a child and as a teenager. And only when Carlos comes back, right? Because Carlos goes to teach the police in Belo Horizonte in 1928. Then in 29, he's in Sao Paulo, and he opens a school in Sao Paulo. Only when he comes back to Rio 1930s that Elio goes to live with him, right? So the point is that Elio Grace's childhood was very difficult. In 1930, he goes to live with his brothers, and he starts training jiu-jitsu. In 1932, this incident with Rufino happens. So he's a young boy, a child. He's a... This was right when he turned 19 years old. It was in the same month. He turns 19 October 1st. I think this happened October 20th or something like that of 1932. And Rufino had just um, written a very disrespectful letter. I'm not justifying this, but a very disrespectful letter insulting Carlos in the newspapers. I have the letter. It's a terrible letter. Very disrespectful. And so the Gracie brothers went and met him in front of this club, and a fight took place. According to Elio and what he told me his whole life, his brothers did not get involved physically. They just made a circle so that nobody would come and break it up. And that Elio said, I'm here to answer the letter. And he took him, and he took Rufino down, and he said that he 
beat him in an aggressive way. So much that Carlos said, enough, let's go. And that Elio got angry and said, you tell me to beat this guy up and now you want me to stop? So it was Carlos's idea? 100%. Carlos was the leader. Carlos was the, was the mentor. Carlos was there with him, but he asked his brother to do the job because his, he probably considered that Elio was the one best prepared to do it. Not only was Carlos's idea, but Carlos was there with them. The t Carlos was also arrested and convicted for that mm -hmm. crime. Together with George, it was Carlos, George, and Elio. And it's interesting that they selected Elio to fight. Now, according to Rufino's friends, meaning the people who worked with Rufino in the same club, Rufino was jumped by the three brothers. It was dark, it was rainy. I was not there, so I cannot tell you for sure. I can tell you my opinion. My opinion, my belief, is that somebody like Elio Gracie would not do that, of three people beating one person. Uh, that's not, and he told me his whole life that he didn't do that. And that Rufino was making that up because he was embarrassed that he was beat by this 19-year-old kid. Right, who had just fought Fred Ebert, by the way. It was right after the Fred Ebert fight. So Elio Gracie was very well trained and very well prepared. So he fought Fred Ebert for two hours and 40 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. So the thing is that, now you asked me very specifically, did Elio talk about this in his later years and did he regret it? Yes, he did. He told me that he regretted it, that he shouldn't have gone there and beat the guy up because of that, that he was a young kid and that they did that when they were all young, but that looking back, he doesn't um, advise anyone to act in that way, right? It was something that a 19-year-old boy did. He thought he was defending the honor of his family. He went there to, to respond to this guy who insulted them publicly, and especially in the 1930s, that in Rio, that was something that was very common for people to take matters into, you know, you cannot judge what happened in 1932 Based with on, the eyes because, yeah. of 2024. No, no, I, I get uh, some things I can tell you from from my neighborhoods where I grew up. Looking back, like seeing the, the teenagers when I was seven and eight and nine, like, what is this? And again, it's product of their generation and their own yes. environment. Um, if you look at Kimura, there's classmates that wanted to stab him, classmates, little kids, or... Uh, I'm not justifying anything. I'm just saying at the time, it was a crazier times. You have- no, and, I see, and I see some of the haters. Yeah, exactly. Some of the haters, they criticize Elio Grace so strongly, but they don't criticize Yamashita. They don't criticize, because we have accounts of some of these fights that were brutal that happened in Japan. Mm. You know, one of, I don't remember which one of the, of the four Saigo. guardians it of the Kodokan, he, who was going he, to the street to train the techniques and break people's arms to train and, Right? Isn't there a story like that? It was it was Saigo um, who was drunk. I think it was Shiro Saigo who was drunk, and he went out, you know, challenging people, and then he he stumbled upon Araumi, the uh, sumo fighter, and yeah. he the f police tried to break them up. He also assaulted the policemen. So, but also now that you said something that like threw me off, you said Carlos wanted him to do this, so he was. 30 years old? Yes. And telling his 19-year-old brother, go do the job for me, it, it seems, it, it's also like, it, it is the, it is now also on, on Carlos too, and it's, it seems like such a, such a, such a bad thing to do, not only to, for, okay, Hofino, it was a crime, they were convicted, but also to your little brother to, to, to get him to go and do this also. I don't Again, know I, think I, 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 I understand what you're saying, but we have to look at it with the eyes of that time. These yeah. were two professional fighters. Hufino was a professional fighter as well. It's not like they attacked him from behind. Um, I believe Elio Grace's story that he came here and he said, I'm here to answer the newspaper. And then he he attacked him. And, um, and, I, and, and even Elio Gracie in his later years admitted that that was not something that he would yeah. recommend and that he would do again. Because some people say, who is Elio Grace to talk about philosophy? Well, people make mistakes and they learn from those mistakes. And yeah. Elio Gracie was someone who definitely learned some hard lessons 
in his yeah. life and he always mentioned those lessons and he was always trying to become a better human being. 